Good evening, everyone. It's uh, just after 7.30, so if I ask you to settle down, we'll uh, start the meeting. Um, I'll go to my normal, you're being filmed because you are all familiar with that. Um, so we first of all start off with apologies. Thank you. Uh, minutes of uh, previous meeting, pages 5 to 20. Any corrections, comments? Can I sign them off? And there's obviously two minutes. Any declaration of interest? Yep. Yeah. Can I make my customary declaration that my husband is a director of um, the holding company and therefore I've got a non well I've got an interest in the uh, in the business of the uh, um, owner companies. Thank you. And that's right. Similarly I'm chairman of Optimist, so I declare an interest in the company's item. Thank you. Uh, as far as I'm aware, we've got no public questions. So we'll go straight into the member questions. Uh, Councillor Ferris, would you like to step up and ask your question? Good evening. Most cuts in staff in a service being proposed, will WB be in a fit state and as an effective council in the future? Thank you, Councillor Ferris. Uh, the 21st Century Council Programme offers this council the opportunity to change and improve the way that services are delivered to our residents. By taking out inefficiency, by increasing the range of transactions residents can do remotely and digitally, using leading edge technology, by reshaping our staff team to work more across disciplines and departments, by reducing bureaucracy and the number of staff and managers, by doing these things we can protect many services that in any other council have long since been ended or cut. We can enable our staff to work differently and to advance their training and development as a direct consequence. And we can avoid the service cuts and salami slicing you suggest in your question. So yes, I am absolutely grateful for the opportunity to confirm that by doing what we are doing, we will be leaner and fitter, enabling us to continue to perform as a good, strong and effective council, despite the financial challenges we face. Thank you, Councillor Baker. Um, I, I haven't mentioned Salami in my question, so I, I, uh, I'm quite aware of the restructuring approach. My supplementary is uh, from past history, WBC has not been that good at introducing new IT services. In addition, WBC has one of the highest levels of elderly people in the country. How can you ensure that these residents and others will still be able to access WBC services easily? Uh, thank you. Um, IT, as a former IT professional myself, is always difficult to implement, <coughs> and I think we're no different to any other uh, organisation. Uh, but there is a strong uh, working project to make the IT work this time around. Uh, it's going to be uh, overseen by a couple of professional IT councillors as well to make sure that, uh, as far as we can, we'll uh, remove any of the issues that we had previously. In terms of uh, access to services for the elderly and vulnerable, um, it won't just be on the basis of IT. We all know, uh, certainly at my age anyway, uh, that there, no, there is a high number of elderly people <coughs> that are IT literate, um, but in two or three generations, it will be virtually everyone. So we absolutely have to be able to cater for those vulnerable people who do not have that IT experience. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Jones, if you'd like to step up and ask your question. Thank you very much, Keith. 
Uh, you are running a Conservative Council under a Conservative Government. What is your answer for residents who want to know why working and we've still got such a poor deal as the worst funded unitary authority in the country? Thank you, uh, Councillor Jones. There's a simple answer, I suppose, which is we are too wealthy. Councillor Jones, could you turn your mic on? The simple answer is that we're too wealthy and uh, too white, but uh, and therefore the econometric model don't do so well. But the official answer is, as you are aware, the government has responsibility to stabilise the dire financial situation they inherited many years ago from the Labour government, which has been compounded by numerous international and global events over more recent times. Local government must play its part in the government's austerity measures, and this council is not Im immune from this. Indeed, we have financially managed our way through £36.5 million worth of efficiency savings since 2011-12. I agree that WBC does get a poor funding deal compared with other authorities, which is as a result of a national funding model that has a strong bias to those areas considered to be less wealthy and less healthy than us. The more recent funding formula compounds this issue by bringing our council tax receipts into the grant reduction calculation. Council tax being an element of income we have had to increasingly rely upon as our general grant has reduced over the years to almost nothing. We are unfortunately bound, in the same way as all other local authorities, to a national funding formula, and so our room for manoeuvre and getting a better deal from the government is often limited. WBC is only one voice among the 418 local authorities in the UK, and among these are substantially larger and higher profile authorities such as <coughs> Manchester, Birmingham, Liverpool and the London boroughs. All are understandably out to protect their own interests in times of austerity. Having said this, we are not <coughs> a success in representing the interests of Wokingham at the highest levels in government. In January this year, the leader and myself, working with key ministers, managed to persuade the government to make an unprecedented rewrite of their local government finance settlement proposals issued in December. We managed to secure over two million transitional relief grant uh, for two years uh, and a more significant secured a reversal of negative rates re sorry, revenue support grant up to 2018-19. And that's actually very, very important. The Secretary of State for Communities and Local Government, Greg Clark, in his statement on the 8th of February this year, stated that a small number of councils were concerned that as their revenue support grant declined, they would have to make a contribution to other councils in 2017 to 18 or 18 to 19. I can confirm that no council will have to make such a payment. Working on one of the councils, and this had, had a significant impact on working, so this was a great success for us in bringing our influence to bear. The challenge now remains to secure this position. No negative revenue support grant in 2019-20 in and beyond. And we hope all the community of Wokingham will help us in winning this key financial argument. I'm sure we have a supplementary. <coughs> I do, yes, thank you very much. Uh, at the beginning of your answer, Councillor Pollock, too wealthy and too white, mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit of a, a strange... Uh, at the beginning to your answer, but uh, 36 million of savings, that means the officers have done an extremely good job and very pleased that they have been able to do that. But residents just don't understand why. You as a Conservative Council and Conservative members of Parliament with a Conservative government can't actually get a better deal for working on. So what more can you do than you have already done? I think as I've said, the econometric model that allocates national government money is based on certain factors. And those factors, which is, as I said, the wealth or the opposite of that, which is deprivation. So <coughs> you consider deprivation statistics and you consider other needs, often linked to immigration. Um, those are factors in the econometric model that skew uh, the allocation of government money to those areas that have higher amounts of deprivation or uh, ethnic uh, need. And we don't score very well on those. And therefore, we don't 
end up with significant <coughs> amounts of money. Whereas if you compare us to Reading, Reading gets substantially more from the government as far as uh, revenue support grant is concerned, and much more of their total revenue <coughs> is actually financed from central government money. Whereas in both of them, we have next to nothing. Uh, that is the fact. But how do we change that? We, we do every time there is a review of the, uh, the formulas we lobby for those aspects of the formula that, that are beneficial to us, and we lobby against those aspects of the formula that uh, deprive us of um, we, we do badly. And that's what we do, I don't think, as I said in my answer earlier. The key piece going forward is the negative revenue support grant for 2019-20. I think that's an important piece for us going forward over the next two or three years, is to ensure that that principle that of our hard-earned council tax or our hard-earned business rates, that we don't lose even more of that than we do currently. Thank you. Um, Councillor Shepherd, back, would you like to step up and uh, <coughs> ask your question, please? Thank you. Uh, Malcolm, it's your, your turn this time. Uh, will you include the number of schools, railroad stations, park and ride locations, and other locations which are considered problems with parking for the parking warden hours, warden hours allocated to the town or parish rather than just the length of the yellow lines? Yes, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have a supplementary? Yes. Yeah. I realize that yellow lines, yellow paint must be exceedingly expensive in this country and therefore that's the reason why you picked that. But will you please work with the local members to work on problem areas rather than just allocating by yellow lines? Uh, it isn't just by it isn't just by yellow lines. It is by a whole range of factors, uh, including the, the ones you mentioned and, and more. And they will, of course, be considered as they are always on uh, these uh, TROs. Thank you. Um, as Beth Rowland is here, uh, we'll um, provide a written answer for. For Councillor Rowland. Uh, Councillor Bray, would you step up and use your question, please? Good evening, everybody. Um, this is about the council owned local plan sites. Uh, the council has put forward some areas of land that it owns for inclusion in the updated local plan. Uh, they're listed on page 88 of the agenda and they're mainly designated as leisure or leisure public open space. Could you please explain site by site how much of the land you envisage would remain open space and how much of it you're planning to use for buildings associated with leisure use? Councillor Rashall. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Councillor Bray. Um, your question is premature. Um, the council has put forward these sites in response to a call for sites within the local plan update process. These sites will be individually assessed as part of that process. Um, this assessment will provide information to enable any decision on the mix of buildings versus open space. Uh, the local plan covers the period to 2036 which means that any such decisions can be made as needs must over the next 20 years. Thank you, I'm sure you have some. Yes, I, I do. Um, I appreciate the position, and I think there's more certainty about some sites in there than others. For example, the Grace Farm site, I think we know that that's headed. Um, but there are um, some sites in there which are quite sensitive, Dinton Pastures and the land um, that the Avenue in <coughs> particularly. Um, so, are you imagining that you put any buildings in there? Are you primarily thinking that they are, I'm not going to the countryside, they are green space and they should remain largely green space? I mean, again, your question is premature. I mean, the assessment process will follow, and there's a two year assessment process in effect to build up to an inspector. Um, looking at our local plan update. So the question is premature. We don't imagine anything, um, but we've put our sites forward in good faith. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Um, so, we, so we're moving on to item 50, the 21st century council business case. Um, one of those rare ones that actually down to me. 
Um, this, from 21 to 62, this is the effectively first part of our contribution to uh, uh, making the savings that we need to do, not just for the coming year, but also for a three year uh, time frame, which uh, is consistent with the uh, four year settlement that comes later on in the agenda. Um, the recommendations are on page 21. There will be a <coughs> radical change in how this council operates. Uh, if it um, goes well, which I am sure it will, we will actually be able to do that twin benefit of reducing costs and improving services. So I'll, I'll leave it there as, if there's any questions and comments. Anthony? So I just um, wanted to welcome this uh, proposal that I've been around when we did business process re-engineering and also the need transformation and this, um, though more radical, is a project in the same vein. And uh, I think looking back, those previous projects uh, did deliver the savings, and I have no doubt that this one will deliver the savings as well. Um, and I look forward to the, the IT side delivering benefits to those of us who are councillors and doing our work as well as uh, enabling the officers to uh, do their work better as well. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Robinson. Can I just confirm that on page 25, there's a three to three or four little dots um, about the personnel board. The personnel, the personnel board is this evening. My, um, the, the chairman reported that um, the, um, the paper was approved by the person. Thank you. Any other questions? I do need to make a correction on the recommendation. You have the amendment, you should have the amendment on your table. Um, recommendation four, uh, the second uh, sum, financial sum, isn't £2,752, it's £2,752 million. So we've made savings already. <laughs> so if there's no other questions, I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour, please shut. Thank you. That's unanimous. So our Chief Executive's got a lot of work to do uh, starting tonight. Tonight, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to item <coughs> 51, multi-year settlement and efficiency plan. That's uh, you, Councillor Pollock. Thank you, yes. Um, some of you may remember that uh, on the back of the, uh, the four-year settlement that was offered to us in the period of December through to February, uh, which was offered to all local councils, uh, there was a slight sting in the tail, which um, is not unusual when dealing with central government, um, and they required us to, if we wanted to accept the deal, in which case they probably will keep to it, though there is small print that says they can renege on that. <coughs> but if we didn't accept it, then that it is a bit open season. And so we have chosen to seek to accept the supplement that has been offered for the, the, the four years, and, uh, but we needed to submit a sort of savings plan that showed how we're going to uh, achieve it, um, uh, which is what you have on outline on pages 63 to, to 69, um, which we will submit to the relevant uh, government department uh, next month. Um, it doesn't preclude us from lobbying in connection with this negative revenue support grant that I talked about earlier, um, and I can assure you that we will be lobbying hard along with other councils who are affected by that uh, because it is extremely important principle uh, going forward uh, that we retain our council tax receipts to spend in this borough and that we retain as much of the business rates as we can, which at the moment is only 16 out of 60 million, uh, that we retain as much of that as we can um, because that to some extent means that at some point we end up being 100% financed by our own resources. Uh, and it's a very important principle that once we get to that stage, that we so suddenly find that our hard earned council taxes sent somewhere else. But mm -hmm. I'll take any questions. 
Charlotte? Thank you. Um, just a point really to, to mention. Um, on page 65, uh, the loss of the educational service grant um, coming in uh, next year and the following year as well is a substantial amount. We have a multi-academy trust task and finish group um, starting next month. Um, where members have been invited to come along to that because um, we will need to address how we will go forward um, with our schools working in partnership to find uh, new solutions to, um, to deliver services but in a different way. Uh, where our schools can uh, buy into services that they most value. Um, I, I agree with you that that is an important component to the savings plan and that we will have to find a way to achieve that. Are there any other questions? I'll make a couple of comments. Uh, I know that most of the other Berkshire authorities have actually reluctantly signed up to this one. I don't think Reading has yet. Uh, the other point I'd make is just confirm austerity started under a coalition government. And the coalition partner was the Little Democrats, wasn't it? I believe so, yes. I thought there were many of them left. <laughs> I believe this I believe there's an amendment to the recommendation. Yes, uh, thank, thank you for that um, opportunity. Uh, in, in addition to the recommendation on, the, on page 63, there's an additional recommendation 2, which says that the specific wording of the response to the Secretary of State for communities and local government be delegated to the Director of Finance and Resources in consultation with the Executive Member for Economic Development and Finance, and that just enables us to uh, deal with any change to the world. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Pollock. So I'll go to the vote as amended, including opportunity. All those in favour, please shout. That's unanimous, thank you. Moving on to the next item uh, Council and Companies Business. Uh, on page 71 to 78, uh, it's fairly straightforward. If there are, um, don't intend to go in detail, Optolis is still uh, picking up uh, pieces of work from other councils, which is uh, to be uh, applauded because it reflects the quality of the Optolis company and the. Um, WHL, our housing company, um, are making really good progress on the two big projects, Phoenix Avenue uh, and the Foster's Excess Care Home. So I think things are looking well. But if there are questions on Optalis, we've got the chairman here and we've got the commissioner as well. Um, is, is there any questions at all? No? Okay, let's go to the vote then. All those in favor of the recommendations, page 71. Thank you. Something I've been waiting for years <laughs> and years and years. Introduction of civil parking enforcement post. Yeah. Page 79 to 84. Thanks, Richard. I think this one's yours. Most people would know uh, currently the uh, police do all their parking enforcement. Civil so parking is where we take it on board ourselves. There have been several uh, stages of development along the way to get this far. Uh, at this stage now is where we're asking the executive to approve the resolutions in this report, specific revolu uh, resolutions, which allows the submission of our application to the Department of Transport for undertaking CPE in our borough. Uh, is, uh, Anthony? How, how many other local authorities still don't have city parking. Do you, do you have any idea? 92% uh, have it. 92% so, of the local authorities have it and 8% don't. Uh, and of the 8% that don't have it, many of them, like us, are actually employed for it at the moment. Any other questions? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Comment more than a question. I think it's uh, disappointing that uh, we've had to take this cost on, on behalf of the local taxpayers because the police are not doing what the police are actually meant to do and have done in the past, so I don't think it's really fair on local ratepayers that they have to they have had to pay for this. However, it's unavoidable, and I just hope that we do not end up on any of those nighttime 
um, free view parking enforcement TV shows which show some pretty appalling behaviour and that we even weren't this very sensible. Thank you, Ed. Uh, I, the only thing I suppose would be to read a list of the resolutions which I don't think is worthwhile. Um, the document in here, agenda item 53, lists all the uh, resolutions that uh, we need to be passed. Um, and it's quite a substantial list. We've been working toward that, obviously. All the background work's been done, and uh, the scope will be to give us authority to complete those and submit them. Thank you. Um, and you might be wondering why the word resolutions has crept in. Um, this report has been overseen by someone from who's moved in to work with us from another council, and the other council used to always talk about resolutions. Um, so to be consistent, we will make sure that there's a bit of training uh, at the relevant offices to be more we'll consistent. Be resolutions now. <laughs> <laughs> Do we use resolutions? No, no, no. So apologies for those people who are sort of confused on the different terminology. So we'll go straight for all those in favour for the Thank you. We now ask. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Right. Um, moving on. Uh, agenda item 54. Uh, council sites for the local plan. Page 85 to 88. Uh, council Asher. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, simply, um, we need to acknowledge and accept the council site submitted uh, to the local plan update. And uh, as mentioned in, in the answer to Councillor Bray's question, delegate authority for submission of a detailed assessment as part of the local plan process to the Director of Finance and Resources and the Executive Member for Planning and Regeneration. And note that the detailed assessment will be brought back to the Executive for approval as part of the local plan process, please. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, I have one, uh, Councillor Ashworth. Um, the, in the course of that, um, looking at the, at the sites and seeing how they're sustainable, etc., and picking up Councillor Bray's question, can you um, confirm that local members will be actively encouraged to be involved? in some of those outcomes. Absolutely, and uh, they have been a little bit to date, I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you, so we'll move to the vote. The recommendations there, there's three of them on page 85. All those in favour, please shut. Thank you, it's uh, unanimous. Oh, this is another one we've been waiting for years and years and years. Our very first neighbourhood plan. Um, <laughs> about three years in the making, I think it is. So, um, Councillor Rashford, it's you again. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, yeah, I was actually with Shenfield Parish Council yesterday, and uh, I just commend them for, for the effort, and us, I think, in putting into the, to delivery this, um, this neighbourhood plan. We're, we're um, I think we're seven steps through a nine-step process, <laughs> and uh, we need to acknowledge um, an independent um, examination, and the... Um, the modifications uh, that have come about from there, and then move on to our, our refer their referendum. Um, they're ready for the referendum. They they want it on the 8th of December, um, and I'd like to uh, commend this to you for approval, please. Thank you, um, Councillor Henry. Thank you. Um, I was with them today. <laughs> you were. They're getting a lot of attention, yeah, they are they? A lot of attention. <laughs> And um, indeed, it has been a really long process. I'm really excited that we've uh, been able to vote on this today. And uh, they really get 10 out of 10 for endurance because Absolutely. this process has gone on for a long time. <laughs> and um, I, you know, the, the vote will be later on this year. And I just hope that um, looking at colleagues over there um, in, the, in the press, um, I hope that you'll give it as much attention as possible because. Uh, it is in the deep part of winter, and it would be really great to get as many people out as possible to come and vote in the referendum because um, it's it's a significant um, thing getting a neighbourhood plan um, through. So, thank you. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you. I, I, similarly, uh, this has been a long time in the process, and, and I know 
parish council have worked very hard on it. And there have been ups and downs and backwards and forwards uh, between us and them over a number of issues. Um, and it's good to see it come out and it's good to see it going to referendum and hopefully the public will approve. Uh, any other questions? And I will add to the campaign and take this. Comes to the press. This is the first one for us, and I don't believe there's that many across the country, mainly in Jordan because it takes such a long time mm. and a lot of voluntary effort to get through all the hurdles. I think the only <coughs> organisation I know that has uh, more steps to complete is Network Rail <laughs> than the neighbouring plan, but neighbouring plans is getting quite close to there. Grip process. So we'll move to the vote. All those in favour on the three recommendations, page 89, please share. That's uh, unanimous again. Uh, page 125 to 127, amendments to the Constitution of the Workingham Sacra. Uh, Councillor, welcome to Thank you. Um, so SACRA is the Working Advisory Council on Religious Education um, and it's made up of members of local government and teachers, members of faith groups and belief communities as well. And the remit um, is twofold, it's to monitor and support the delivery of religious education and collective worship in schools um, and also uh, provide a locally agreed syllabus um, of religious education uh, which is revised every five years. Um, they have recently got a new chair um, and uh, their constitution hasn't been reviewed since 2009, so they've put forward um, some uh, infinitely sensible recommendations um, which are listed on page uh, 126. So I hope that um, the executive will be able to see them. Uh, any questions? We'll go straight for that. Go straight for that. All those in favour of the recommendations? That's uh, unanimous. Um, drug and alcohol recovery service. There you go. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, just both Julian and, and me, so uh, you can either, either of us can take questions. But, um, so I'm, I'm bringing a recommendation uh, to the executive this evening to sign up for the uh, re uh, procurement of the substance use services for our borough. <coughs> um, there are two different options outlined in the paper, um, but I would like uh, the executive to consider option two. And this is to provide um, the, all the operational um, uh, services and the demand-led services of this service. Uh, so the demand-led services are things like the needle exchange and supervised consumption. Um, this has um, many plus points uh, for going for this option. Uh, includes um, the stability of the budget, um, a drive up of the performance of the service, um, which we've seen over the last year by um, changing the provider. Um, the contract is uh, for two years, and then we can increase it by a further year, and then another year, and then another year. So it's much more flexible doing it this way. Um, so we only have to commit for two years, and then we can extend it. And um, so the, uh, our potential savings um, laid out in the paper. So uh, the potential savings could be in the region of twenty thousand uh, pounds in year two and in year three. Um, but obviously, we can um, make the savings uh, uh, possibly bigger if, uh, if we extend the contract. Um, and uh, on page 142, um, I think it's interesting to have a look about uh, the different type of uh, service uses broken down um, and the need within the borough. And the contract would be starting on the 1st of April 2017. So, uh, if any members have any questions? Are there any questions? We'll move straight to the oh, on recommendation 139, all those in favour, please show. That's unanimous. Uh, agenda item 58, disbanding the community sums of the uh, Thank you, Chairman. Um, this is straightforward. This is just one that's been uh, no longer needed um, because it's been replaced by the executive. Um, so it's already in um, what we're proposing. So I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions? A no? um, comment I'll make is one of the reasons for the community sums advisory panel that is going to put some of these decisions into the public domain. Well, the executive is exactly that. Right? It's a more cost-effective, uh, slicker. So, so, so if there's no other questions, I'll move straight to the vote. All those in favour, please show. Are you unanimous? Um, Councillor McGee-Sumner, I think uh, you're up again. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, good news story then. Um, selection of Woking Housing Limited uh, as our local housing company for three areas. Uh, there is uh, uh, part two, if people need to go into part two, but hopefully we won't. So the land adjacent to 6 Norton Road, 62 Finch Road early, and 74 to 78 London Road in Woking. So I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions, comments? Go straight to the vote. Um, six recommendations there, all those in favour, please sure. share. That's uh, unanimous. Uh, another one for you, Councillor McGee. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, again, uh, to select Woking Housing Limited as the Council's owned local housing company, um, this time for land adjacent to 52 Elizabeth Road, uh, 80 September Road, 9 Middlefield and Twyford, 68 to 69 Orchard State, Twyford, and 24 to 25 Gorick Square, Woking. Yeah, happy to take any questions. I was rusted. I do, I do stand corrected. <laughs> We're well, in the Twyford area. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you heard? Twice it's taken in the rust. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You used to be together, if you remember. It's <laughs> before my time. Uh, I was a bit concerned. I thought you could say it's in Maidenhead or something. Uh, any, any yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Can I can I ask a, a question? Mm. See, if I'll take any other mm. questions. Um, because we are transferring this land to working with housing limited, that does not necessarily mean that a development would be uh, built on that land because it says, where is it, uh, I'm somewhere in here. Yes, yeah, so item six, recommendation six. Um, if you haven't got planning consent, you won't be built on. Or there might be viability issues of not building. Yeah, that's 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 yeah, that's absolutely the case. This, this just allows working housing to take, take it forward um, to the next stage if they feel that it's not appropriate or it's not viable, then it won't go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there any other questions otherwise? I'm going to vote. All those in favour, please show. That's uh, unanimous. Mm -hmm. um, and Absolutely. we come to the end of the meeting. Uh, thank you everyone for attending. <coughs> nice to see you, Councillor